All right, I'm here with Renee, and um, I'm just let's just get straight to it. Um, what's your take right now on the state of uh, the title movement? What, what do you think about it? Wow, uh, I think that the uh, this there's there's a lot of people on. Uh, I can't say a lot. It's probably just a certain people or individual who, you know, they they blast people online. And they want to come up with, they want to, you know, confront people and, and debate with people. But when they get confronted or be challenged to be recorded on video, you know, and they talk all this type, they talk all this online and on Facebook, but on the internet. But when they can be confronted to be recorded to be uh, to debate, they turn things down. You know, I don't think that. I think that if you, if you a man of your word or or you you know what you're talking about and for you know at, at first they they accept the challenge right. you know what i mean at first but then when somebody uh confronts them to say listen i put you on video they'll be like oh wait a minute uh i never said i was gonna do it it's like yeah, they the conversation the changes the conversation you know? changes you know yeah and i don't know i mean that doesn't seem right what's up brother you know, it doesn't seem kind of um Taino-ish. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it was you know? just a matter of just putting things yeah. into perspective. Yeah. Like, you know, when we put post stuff on uh, Facebook or whatever, you know, it's to start a conversation. Yeah. But it's one thing to have a conversation on social media, but it's a lot better, in my view, mm -hmm. to have a conversation in person, especially on video, mm -hmm. because we can compare and contrast with opinions and also at the same time just to give clarity because sometimes you know when you're having a conversation with someone online it's not the same intimacy intimacy in having a conversation with that person in person you know it will be a totally different vibe you know it's just like if I'm texting you you know I might not be able to get my point across that well texting but maybe in person I can have um, a better uh, chance in uh, explaining my opinion to you you know it, and it can clear up a lot of air you know, so the point with that is, was just, you know, just to build some ground and also, you know, being able to come together and to move forward because, you know, to have debates online, it can only go so far. I agree. And it's like, it's like, you know, when you text online or you talk on, on Facebook, it can come out different. You know, the way the person is typing might not sound like the person is coming out. Uh, um, um, probably he, he's not or he or she is not trying to um, um, offend you you know it just might come out like that because it's the way you know it's, it's, it's Facebook you're typing you know it's coming it sounds a little different when you talk to a person you know if you talk to an individual in person you know yeah. it comes out different you can hear the person's uh, the tone you know the voice you know right. you can see how he's it's coming like out. basically when you throw jabs like such as you know um well, you only studied books. Yeah, that that right yeah. there, you know, yeah, yes. I study books. I do, you know, and I read a lot of books, I do, but it doesn't it doesn't just because individuals go to powwows, for example, you know, a lot of people go to they say that you're not native because you don't go to powwows or you you gotta surround yourself with okay. with Indians. Yeah. I, I dis I disagree with that, you know what I mean? Yeah. If um, you if you ask my opinion about what does the powwow represent to the people, the way that I see it, it represents the people in recalling what was lost, yeah. like dressing up in regalia, right? Because the regalia represents the spirit, right? It represents the spirit recalling what they once were, mm -hmm. just like in the film Embers of the Spirit, which we'll be talking about later on after we finish uh, clarity, uh, giving some clarity to this. I agree. It's like, um, you know, making, making, going to powers. Saying that you got to go to powers to be Taino don't make you more native than, right. than anyone. It's, it's not you know necessarily, I mean? but it is associated with the individual recalling what was uh, once in them that they're trying to uh, regain. Mm -hmm. And part of that comes with uh, learning contemporary material culture, mm -hmm. like making hamakas and stuff like that. Um, and also, it takes some reading because... All of that coincides with recalling who you are, mm -hmm. you know, your indigenity. Like, for example, um, you know, there are many within that social 
uh, paradigm, you know, they only see themselves as being Taino, mm-hmm. and they don't acknowledge anything else. Mm-hmm. They're not. They're now, that doesn't go to say that all of them are closed-minded. It's just that uh, some individuals they prefer through see solely through that paradigm. I agree, and it, and then the funny thing is that they say that you you you, you reading books to make you native, but. The whole reason you know about being Taino is because you read the Chronicles. Right. So if, without you reading the Chronicles, let's we'll say you never even read the Chronicles. Right. You would never know. You would not be following what you, you know, you would not be doing what you're doing today. You know what I mean? Most of them haven't been doing what to do today. Right. So you had to be, um, somehow read the Chronicles in order to, um, to understand the past of your ancestors. You know what I mean? But yeah, I don't go to powwows. I mean, it doesn't make me um, more native. It doesn't make you more native right. than me. You know um, what I mean? And, it, and it's a matter, and it's just a matter of putting it into perspective, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, our people living in the islands and the Antilles, you know, do they acknowledge powwows? Maybe they use something else. They'll go to an event where uh, a group of people is reenacting uh, an arito, yeah. you know? And I can understand that they're trying to bring a coach that died 500 years ago. I, I, understand, I, I totally understand that. But you, people have to understand that. And yes, we might not we'll never bring it back, but people have to understand that the the our culture 500 years ago it was wiped out, yes, but it was totally unique. It was different. We're talking about different people. These are different natives from the Caribbean. There's a difference between the natives in the Caribbean and natives in North America. Uh, the language, uh, the lifestyle, the agriculture, um, just the, the character, you know, the discipline, the, the discipline, um, everything, the 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 medicine. Uh, the shamans. I mean, yes, they all. It, it's all similar, but the uh, the characteristic of uh, the the way that they uh, do rituals. You know what I mean? The way it is totally different right. than it's North strict, America. It strictly had an Amazonian base. It had an Amazonian yes. base. We know through contemporary archaeology that we know that uh, uh, the society in Antilles did conduct it in trade. Mm-hmm. You know. But when you study the essence of the culture and what's even contemporary in the present, it still has an Arawakan base. Yeah, it still has an Arawakan base, and it, ha- it didn't. The language is different linguistically, totally different. Um, I-, I just cannot go into a uh, to a native, another native culture. Not, not, not that there's anything wrong with it. You know, I I, I respect every native culture, but I feel and and incorporated that personality or that characteristic into my. Uh, my culture it, I don't feel right You know what I mean And this whole thing about uh, You being more native per, uh, Than me and, and I'm 100% native I mean you, you actually You have to be Keep it real Like Ain't nobody 100 Nobody in the Caribbean Is 100% native no more Right You know what uh, I mean Yeah and, and Once again You know It is a matter of perspective You know Like there are some That see themselves Religiously mm-hmm. And then there's others That see themselves In contemporary you know? I agree, and it's, that's that's one thing. Like, um, I, I I somebody asked me, um, "What are you?" You know what I mean? Me, I can I can say I'm Taino, and I can say I'm I'm African. I can say um, I hate to say it, but it, it makes who I am. I can say I'm European because I have it in, in my in my DNA. But I won't say that. But um, there's a lot of individuals out there who know their background. And they know their DNA, and they come up and saying, "Oh, I'm a hundred percent this." Right, not right. hundred percent. It anything. becomes a problem. It becomes a. They have an identity crisis. When you, know you know create I mean? the romanticism, mm-hmm. it's just like it's fine when you go to an event, so you can feel and embellish what makes you connected to that social uh, paradigm, that indigenous paradigm. Mm-hmm. You know, but when you lie to yourself, when you present to yourself that something. That's not really there, you know. Then it becomes an issue, you know. It becomes uh, 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 imbalance, you know, when it comes when it creates arguments that goes nowhere. Mm-hmm. So the purpose of having the suggestion of having a, a a day where you know we will be able to sit down and and bring things into the forefront, you know, at that same time document that. So that our people can learn to put those opinions into perspective. Because that's what's needed right now, in my opinion, that, that I see in the title movement. There needs to be dialogue. And it needs to be documented. And we have to allow the people to decide what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. 
-hmm. And whatever that doesn't make sense, it needs to be brushed to the side. I agree. And, they have, and, and, and this attacking has to stop too. And also, you know, there is, it's the same thing as saying they're hiding from their past. Don't hide from your past. Know that um, I, I agree and I love the fact that people are embracing the Native culture. I do. But I'm not hiding the fact that I have other other ancestors within me as well. Right, because we know. can look at this culturally, mm -hmm. right, and, and acknowledging um, what practices are still relevant. But also we have to look at this in a scientific and a logical manner, mm -hmm. you know. So when we look at it blind, that all we just see is just uh, that just is being native and then nothing else, then it becomes something, it becomes a disease. It's yeah. not healthy. It's not a healthy uh, form of thinking. It's not a hard, it's, it's You're lying to yourself in some way. But not in a way, no. You know, I can't say that. I have to use a different thing. Um, you know, um, I took a DNA test. I mean, DNA test doesn't mean crap to me, you know. But I, it's not, it, didn't, it didn't tell me anything that I didn't know differently than my family already told me, you know. But uh, it came out as that I'm, I'm Native, I'm, I'm African, I'm European. And in Puerto Rico, they do, they do teach you this. But... Um, I can see why there's certain Taino people um, who saying that they're 100% Taino and they exclude the Africanness or the Europeanness. Okay, all right, fine. But in a way, where you, how you want to teach your kids? You want to teach your kids to uh, uh, about different cultures. You know what I'm saying? You want them to to right. uh, to embrace their past. You want them to to uh, you know you you gotta. In order to know where you're going, you got to know where, you, where right. you've been. And also at the same you know time, to teach the youth to not to be balanced and also to recognize what took place. Exactly, right. yeah. You know, you got to teach them about what happened to the ancestors, you know. How they, you know, my mother taught me when I was young. And I wasn't raised that way to, to, to neglect anything that I am. You know, it's, it's who I am, you know what I mean? So, but anyways. Um, you know. All right, so moving forward, right, um... What's your take on Empress of the Serpent? Oh, I love, I, I love the movie. There was a lot of jewels in that movie. But what's interesting is what you told me. I didn't catch it at the end of the movie, which was interesting. When you told me that the, the story would remind you of uh, the journey of Wayahona. Right, and, and because Wabonito. in the film, yeah. it starts with a journey, it right? It starts with a journey. The German ethnographer, yeah. right? He, came, he's, he was on the canoe with his interpreter, mm -hmm. and, right? And the ethnographer was looking for uh, a plant to cure him. Just like the same way in Wahayona um, is searching for a plant mm -hmm. to cure himself. And what's interesting also is that um, when uh, in, in the movie when he when he saw the comet and he called it Wati, uh, Watoima. Right. And what's interesting is that in the Taino word Watu means fire. Right. So he called it Watoima because right. it's a fire ball. Right. You know what I mean? So you can see it linguistically, it's similar to the Taino. Some words. But well, you can see how it all makes sense, and you can also see how they interpret it. They 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 um, they use navigation by learning from the stars. Right. I Everything gonna, in the movie was about. I was going to say that. Right. You know? it's, it was definitely um, there was a huge stellar significance. Yeah. When you study these uh, Amazonian communities and correspond that with uh, the society of the Antilles, such as with the Kalinago yeah. and the Taino. You see a great stellar significance. You oh, know, yeah. Their knowledge is based on uh, stellar. stellar knowledge, stellar meaning knowledge. the stars, the study mm -hmm. of the stars. Yeah. You know, the great snake, uh, uh, the anaconda, is is uh, is a metaphor for the Milky Way. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting what you said that because uh, when I was watching it, and they said that uh, when the guy was in the river, and he said this is where the anaconda fell from the sky of the of the of the, of the Milky Way. Right. And what's interesting is that in the Milky Way, the constellation Ouroboros is there. And Ouroboros is the, is the serpent. Right. And that symbol of the, the serpent that looks like, a, it's an ancient symbol. And it's a serpent that looks like a, like a Taino belt. It's depicted as a snake eating its own tail. Right. And what is that saying is that uh, it's saying that when there's a beginning, there's an end. Right. And it means uh, infinity. So that snake means the, in every culture, Especially even Native culture, they believe that our souls come from the Milky Way. Right. So when I saw this movie, and I'm like, oh, right, that's wow. right, that's right. You know what I, I mean? Agree. Milky Way and the Ouroboros. You right. know what I mean? It's it's, it's very it's very interesting. Right. They, and they mentioned that a lot. If, yeah. if you if you study, 
Yeah. Um, but also what I caught on is, you know, they showed petroglyphs that remind me. Of the Taino petroglyphs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I thought I saw the, 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 the four direction one. The, it looked like the four direction symbol. Yeah. And I thought it was the also the little circles. I right, thought that because was like, yeah. in that movie, the four directions was symbolized as the plant. Which, yeah, that the was plant, also very interesting. Very interesting, to me. yeah. Yeah, but another thing that I wanted to um, to put out, um, right? So, so they live according to the laws of nature, right? Mm -hmm. So, in the movie, the shaman was trying to teach the ethnographer that in order for you to be cured of your sickness, you had to follow a strict journey, which meaning you basically was to live in balance with the jungle. Yeah, you ha you had to. Uh in the movie, as you see, he's, and I liked it, the part when he was uh, when the guy ate the fish, and he goes, "When it, when is this person gonna listen to the jungle?" So what he's saying is, "When is, how is how, when is this person gonna listen to nature?" You know what right. I mean? Because nature is our mother. You right. Know? And as you, as you can see, all native cultures they all um, communicated with the trees, with the animals, right. with the insects. Because he know? was telling him, "Oh, you know, you have no discipline." You have no discipline. You know, and that's the thing. That like, discipline means everything. You know, like it's, in every culture, they go through a fast. You know, they go through. Um, um, they don't have uh, intercourse with their significant other. He, oh, you know, it's interesting that we probably were missing that movie. He told the guy that you must not eat fish, and you must not have intercourse when the moon goes down. Right. You see. Because the moon is uh, a sign of fertility. Right, that's right. When I saw that, I was like, oh, wow, that, that makes sense right there. And that's see, right. everything has to do with stellar. Everything has to do with, with stellar. And nature, nature itself, you know, just nature itself, you know. And that's when I found a lot of interesting stuff in the movie. There's another thing I found uh, um, interesting when, at the end, when he actually, when he, I think when he, the guy actually um, made the, uh, the, uh, what, the, the, the plant into some kind of... Uh, uh, beverage for him to drink right and he went into that that realm right you know and that psychedelic realm and you can see those shapes right, right? right. you saw the colors and you saw the geometric signs and right it, it's very um when you watch it you can see it's very rem reminiscent yeah it is to, reminiscent yeah uh, the tiny little paradigm yeah you, know? and you, you, you I put it like this like those petroglyphs that we see in in, in, um, in the islands those are those are the sign. Those are the, the the drawings of what they saw, and their and their journey. Right. You know what I I'm agree. saying. I agree. That's what it is. And I like agree. the spirals, the, the the color. I mean, not the colors. The 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 the, uh, the eccentric shapes that they have. You know, it's their journey. You know, it's like they were they were describing their journey. They were telling us their journey. You know what I mean? And it's, it's just it's amazing, man. That's, that's a good movie. It's a very good movie. But uh, there was there's a lot of jewels in that movie that that fit a lot of the Taino, um, that that a lot of the Taino. Um, yeah, uh, I definitely culture. agree. I feel that um, a lot of the symbolisms dropped in that film yeah. fits the Taino lexicon. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, a lot of it, yeah, yeah. very important for people to go and see and check it out for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, especially that the production of the film was called Caracol. Right. That that was interesting, you know, and, and we use this word and it means a shell. Like cara, cara, yeah. you know, cara, the cara, guy cara. playing the shaman, he was played by uh, what was his name? Uh, Nipo Torres. Nipil Torres. Yeah, yeah. 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 His name it. was Cara Cara uh, Cara 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 like if I ever watch it, I'll probably watch it like on a DVD so I can press pause. That was actually my second time. Sorry yeah. to play. Yeah. It was I'll definitely, definitely it. worth seeing. Yeah. yeah. If you ever watch it, you have to actually like watch it on a DVD so you can press pause and write down the and whatever. Take notes. And You're take gonna notes. have to take a lot of notes. Because it's subtitles. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of jewels there, yeah. and you, it's oh, and and the Juanin that he was wearing, that uh, right? Because it re yeah. it re re resembled because that draw that's what drew my attention yeah. in the first place yeah. because it, I was like wow, look at him. He yeah. has like a it's a huge quartz. Yeah, it's a huge quartz. It could, it could have been quartz or it could have been cal calcite. I'm not sure. What, you know, what's interesting in that movie, which you just said, that, that quartz or whatever, the diamond that he saw, and you saw the, the, the comet, the, that specific um, um, substance is only created by extremely 
uh, immense heat. Right. And that what makes that is comets. Right. The asteroids. When they get when it hits Earth and that heat condenses, it creates glass and right. crystals. That makes sense of what how he probably got that. You know what I mean? And he saw the comet at the, at the right. You know, it's it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I was. Very, I've never seen that. Yeah, I was very. Of, I was very yeah, drawn into yeah, that. I've never seen that quartz thing, but you know, as we we both know that those specific uh, quartz and and uh, can give a lot of good energy. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Maybe Correct, that's why. Correct, because there was a part that he, he put gave it to the little girl. To the sick girl. Yeah, right. you see yeah, what I'm that saying? That was that was very heavy. That was heavy right there. Yeah. He was blowing smoke to her, and, and, and when I saw that, I was like, hmm, because that quartz or whatever that 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 diamond must have given her some type of energy. Right. Or he was giving her. Right. Or it was just a way of uh, uh, purging. Yeah, or purging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good one when he when the guy was taking the 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 the. the, the the substance that he made from the plant and he vomited it. He goes, okay, now you're clean. You can take it again. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That was a good one. Right. You know what I mean? Because, you, know, you know, as psychedelics that make you vomit, you have that, that side effect that cleans you out. Right. Apparently, you, you're purging all that bad stuff that you had in your body. But, yeah, but one thing I want to bring up in closing, what's going to make the tide of movement move forward? And one of the things that's been on my mind lately is... Putting old information into perspective, like the word Taino, for ex for example, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. You know, everyone knows that Taino is interpreted as meaning good mm -hmm. and a good one. But come to find out this information, for example, with the article that mm -hmm. you and George uh, put out, you know, it sheds another light into that. Oh, yeah. Um, um, well, me and George, um, I, I, I was kind of skeptical about that, the, the word Taino, because... You know, when you read the, when you read the chronicles, uh, especially Columbus's chronicles, you know, uh, which Columbus never really uh, mentioned the word. He mentioned the word ni Taino. Let's get to that before we get into the word Taino real quick. You can see in his in his diary, he says he never, even the guy who was writing, even Las Casas states, because Las Casas is the one who wrote Columbus's diary, that he never he didn't know what it meant. Right. What he said was that they said another word for personage. He don't know if it meant governor chief or hidago right. you know and, and specifically hidago is, a, is an old spanish term they used back in, in four, 500, four, 500 years ago and it meant nobility now hidago phonetically sounds similar to the word nitaino or nitaino and of course everybody today they uh they think that nitaino means nobility which is wrong you know it was it came it was a misconception because it was phonetically heard, uh, probably because it was the, similar to the word Hidago. So Columbus hearing Nitaino thinking, okay, and he sees a chief with feathers and all these guys are surrounding him like he's some kind of uh, a noble king. Of course he's going to be like, okay, Hidago or Nitaino. He's going to think, because what they, in their culture, all they, know about is, all they know about is royalty, noble, and kingship. Right. You know? So, of course, there's going to be some type of uh, uh, misconception there. So, I did a lot of research on it, and, and, and this, my the, the, what I came across was tracing a lot of the Kalinago words. Because a lot of the Kalinago words are so similar to the Taino words, considering that um, a lot of the Caribs took um, the women of the... Uh, who were, or you want to say pre-Taino women, or you want to, or you want to call them Aidi people, right. as wives, right. and of course creating a bilingual society. Right. You know, speaking Arawak to the women and speaking Carib to the men. So there was a two-language barrier in the island. That's right. And of course, the the, the women, the Arawak, actually dominated more of the Karinago, um language, but there's a little bit of Carib there still. You know what I mean? So it made the Karinago more Arawakan based. So, if you study the Kainago, you will understand how the Taino spoke. Right, I agree. So, what I found in the Kainago um, language was a word called Ni Tengyong, or Ni Taino, or Ni Tengyong. And I spoke to a woman, you know, Keisha Joseph, who is uh, a, uh, a Kainago linguist herself, and I asked her, how, you, how do you pronounce this word? Because I don't know how to say it, you know, because, you know, the natives spoke using nasalization, right. you know, using the nose. So I asked her, can you record how you say this word? And she said, she, she recorded, and I was like, wow, so the same as Nitaino. It's the right. same. 
Right. You can hear it, you know. And what it means is um, a progenitor or our ancestor because the word ni means my and taino. Now, taino is the short version of ni taino. Now, the word taino was first... Um, 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 read by um, or written by uh, Columbus's physician, um, what's his name, Chanka, Dr. Chanka. Chanka, who was in Guadalupe. And he goes into Aden Guadalupe and he hears this woman saying, Taino, 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 Taino. And he says, like they were saying, peace, 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 uh, or good people. And uh, now that word was a tough one because I've been researching and I still came. I went, I looked in the Karanaga word again. And Nitinyo, the short version to Nitinyo is Tenyo or Teino. It's spelled as T E G N O O N. I mean, T E G N O N. Because of the French. Right. You know, you got to remember that the Karanagas were recorded by the French and it sounds kind of Frenchy. But um, um, it's the same thing as Taino. So they say Tenyo. And, uh, and what it means is ancestor or, um, or, my, or my people. You know, so that's what they meant, my people. And when he, when um, when Chanka heard Taino, Taino, and another one that was recorded was by Pedro uh, Montier. There was uh, an incident when they landed in Dominican Republic in Quisqueya, I would say, and um, I think they put guns on some natives, and they were like Taino, Taino. As you know, he didn't know what it meant, but or oh, good, 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 or friends 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 you know right. it makes sense you put a gun on somebody you're gonna be like hey hey friend friend friends right, right, you know what i'm right, saying right that's what he meant right. you know so easy to uh so taino means um not good people you could, not good people very close my people or or, or my ancestors or or friends because that's what it meant and taino is very close to the uh, the locono word or the arawak word um sino Meaning amigo. Yeah, friend. real quick, speaking about that, I was going to bring up in the film Emperor, Empress of the Spirit, um, they were doing Watiao. You know, oh, exchange, yes, that's right. They were know? doing Watiao. Yeah, they were exchanging. That is very common amongst every Arawak uh, um, culture, as far as I'm mistaken. Right. You know? Watiao is another one. Tiao means friend too. So imagine that we may, be, we may have be saying Taino wrong. What if it's Tiao no? We might be saying it wrong because Tiao means friend or our friend. Right. So Tiao or uh, Tiano or Tiano is probably how you say it. So you might be saying it wrong because remember, we're saying it the way the Spanish heard, not the way our ancestors were saying it. And if you say Tiao, it sounds like you're saying it from the nose anyways, you know. Right. But, um, but as, as I've been researching a lot of Arawak languages that, that, can, that try to put as Thai meaning good, and I haven't found any word similar to Thai and if Taino is so related to the Arawak and base um, I find a lot of words in Taino that's Arawak and base and I find all similar a little bit of uh, some words that were traced into Locono, Wajiro, um, what's the other tribe, um, um, Wayu, Tucano, right. very similar because the Arawak and base but Thai doesn't seem to fit I right. haven't found anything that's meaning good. Yeah, I agree. You know? Especially if you're going to understand what was being said, mm -hmm. especially in the Chronicles and more specifically in mm -hmm. Barney, you have to study the language because yeah. you got to have that compare and con contrast. You know, yeah. you got to show the math because yeah. then you're going to be able to uh, have a better idea of what was being said. Exactly, yeah. And another thing was that um, the only words that ever fit to meaning good is Han. And we said it, they said it all the time in the Thai community. Han Han. Good, good. Han Han Katu. So how can Thai mean good and then you have Han? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it becomes a contradiction. It becomes so, a contradiction. So you, you see? This, is where, this is where we need to mm -hmm. have that dialogue yeah. because this is where we have to put things in perspective. Yeah. And, and you know, I found, I found a lot of words that was related to the word Thai. You know, it's nothing as uh, compared to the word good. The only one is Han. Uh, and Lokono, they have a San. You see what I'm saying? Good. And they have friends, they have a Saino or San, Sanli, meaning friend. As in Taino, instead of with a T, it's spelled with the S. Right. S A I N O or I S A I N L I. Because the Li means like what? People, right? Yeah. Right? Or he. I mean, like he or, or he means he. 
So, my uh, a friend, you know. So, I mean, people not researching it, but I did. I did a lot of research on it. And another thing is that in 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 Garifuna, um, like I said, Taino may have may uh, it, it it means uh, people or friends or family, my ancestors. You can say group or like a tribe, right? It's the same. In Garifuna, there is a word named Saino, like Saino. It's, it's called Saino, like Taino or Taino. You know what it means? Groups. You know, and according to uh, um, uh, Moses uh, Santiago Brinton, he, his theory was that um, he believes that the, the, the Kalinago, the women, that the Kalinago, the Aidi people, were originally the Warani people from Central, from South America. Right. And Warani, and he fit a lot of le words that fit the language of the Aidi people. And he it was, is on the money. And what he found was that, um, now it's not according to me, remember, I, I'm only researching this, this is according to them, I'm not making this up. Um, what he says is that there is a word in Warani named called Taihi, or Taihi. Tai he like Thai. And what it means is clan, tribe, people, family. Yeah. One thing I was gonna you say know? too, what connects Taino culture to the South American continent, you find all through the greater Antilles to the lesser and to the South American continent continent, mm -hmm. you find all these stories talk about a stellar journey, just like how it was described in Embers of the Serpent. Mm -hmm. You know, they all just you have the same principal creation account I that's agree. describing about this society. Yeah. And if you think about it too, even the story of Wanyahona, the sto there's a similar story to in in, uh, in South America, but his name is not Wanyahona, his name is uh, Arawanili. And the story of Wanyahona, he goes into a journey, goes and sees a woman in the water um, named Juan Bonito. He saves this woman, and this woman treat after when he saves her, this woman actually teaches him uh, I think she gives him pleasure, if I'm mistaken, right? right? And then she teaches him the medicine, and he becomes the first bahike. She gives him some uh, CBBs right. as some shaman, some rocks. Right. Now, if you read the story of Adawanili, it's the same thing. He goes into a journey. He sees a woman in the water, uh, a, a water spirit, and her name is um, Orehu, Orihu. Right. And this Orihu is a water spirit who showed this person the medicine and right. gives him right. rocks for the maraca. Just like how it was described in Embers of the Spirit, mm -hmm. right? The large anaconda who's described as a female entity. Mm, yeah, you see? So, it, so it, there's it, a lot of parallels. There's a lot of parallels. There's a lot of similarities. And and, and like I said, uh, why Bonito giving him the sabibis is little rocks. It doesn't specifically say what these rocks are for. But in the story of uh, Arwanili, uh, Erohi Orejo gives him rocks for the maracas. What do shaman uses to cure? They use maracas when they're curing. Right. It's the same thing. Right. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you can find a lot of similarities with South America's mythology. You could compare and you will see, I mean, it's exact the same. You know, you can't miss it. It's right in front of your eyes. Linguistically, too. You know? Yeah, so closing now, I just want to put out so when you are comparing the powwow circuit, you know, what that is is just um, the individuals um, trying to um, reconnect with what was lost, you know. But then we also have to create dialogue. Conversation is needed, mm -hmm. you know. You have to, you have to be able to be mature enough to sit down and even to come forward on video and have a discussion. Let's have a discussion. You know, if we have to uh, organize a, de a debate among uh, one another, then let's do that. You know, yeah. but the point is to, that we want to get to, let's stop with the silliness, you know. Let's stop with the attacking and, and, and let's learn from each other, man. I mean, I mean, a lot of people are afraid. I see, I see a lot of people who ask questions about Tainos and they put, if, if they ask the wrong question, that person gets attacked because one person is, t t is telling him something and then another person is telling him something different. This person goes, oh, no, that's not, not it. And how are you going to, you know, get people to learn? How are you going to grasp the attention? Because it's, you're scaring them away, kind of, you know right. what I mean? You, you, right. You got to, you know, you, you got to learn, you know, 
and moving forward, we want to build structure. Yeah, right? exactly. And if, if, if we want that this uh, social paradigm to move forward, mm -hmm. we have to build structure because structure is very important. I agree, yeah. yeah. All right, so that's all I'll take. Peace.